Well, hello everybody, it's Ian Marshall, and welcome to this week's video. I'm so glad that you're here. Thanks for checking in with me. I uh, figured that it was probably a good time to uh, re-record a video that, I had that I've actually made in the past, uh, my coming out story. Uh, it was a video that I originally recorded about three years ago now. I think it was the second video that I ever put onto YouTube. Uh, it was shot in really poor quality. I was looking down at the camera. There's like a full waddle view. Uh, so I figured because it's so important to me, obviously, and as a result, an important part of this channel. And so I figured it would be a good use of this week's slot to talk about my experience coming out. And my hope is that this video reaches somebody that's looking for a little bit of support, maybe looking for a little bit of encouragement, maybe you are out to a select group of people, maybe you're out and proud, maybe you're not out at all, or maybe somebody's recently come out to you and now you're watching videos on the internet trying to figure out what this all means, or maybe for some advice about how to go about doing it. So whatever it is that you're looking for, I hope that this uh, this video uh, is able to, to give you something. So. I think number one, the biggest thing for me, was that I realized very early on that something was very different about me. And I couldn't put my finger on it for a really long time. I mean, when you're so young, you don't really understand what's happening inside here. You're, like, from my perspective at least, I knew that I felt attracted, I guess, to boys even like early early elementary school but I didn't I didn't realize and I didn't put two and two together that I could be gay at that point in my life so there were certainly lots of experiences throughout elementary school and then moving into high school but more so in elementary school where I remember specifically you know the guys were talking about how hot they thought girls were and of course I always went along with it and pretended like, you know, I thought they were hot too, even though I didn't. I went through a lot of really difficult bullying. I was called names, uh, faggot, homo, fairy, um, anything you can really imagine that would be hurtful to someone who is experiencing these feelings at a young age, especially when you don't really have any understanding of what's going on. For me, I know that I, finally was able to put two and two together when I was probably, I know I came out when I was 15, but I probably knew at the beginning of grade nine. So I was, I think I was 14 years old at the time. And so the first person that I decided to tell uh, was my really good friend, Ashley. And uh, we had just decided one day to, uh, to head downtown. We were gonna see a pink concert and now that I think back about it, I'm not sure if she was probing to kind of figure out what I was gonna say, uh, but she started asking me who I thought was attractive uh, in the stadium, and I had no intention of sharing that with her that night. It just kind of was the right place, right time. And so I just blurted it out. I think that because it was so simple and so easy, I guess with her, that it gave me a lot of encouragement and made me feel better about telling more people. Because I figured if my best friend could still love me for who I was, then I would be okay. Something that I really did realize though, early on, is that the coming out process is really that. It's a process. It's not a one and done type deal. As you go through your life living as a gay man, like it's specifically in my case, it's a continual perpetual thing that, that you're going to have to do. Every time you meet a new person and you start to get close to them and you, you start sharing intimate details of your life, maybe not even intimate details, but even just regular details, and it gets to the point where you start talking about your home life, it's not really a question of if it's going to happen. It's more a question of when it's going to happen with people that you're becoming close to. At least from, again, from my perspective, it does get easier. And I know that's such a cliche thing to say, but it does get easier as you do it more and more often. It gets easier to share that part of yourself with people. So that's definitely something that I would like to put out because I would have liked to have heard that from somebody when I was going through 
um, my initial coming out uh, process or experience. Uh, it does get easier and you gotta keep doing it, but as you do it, it just, it flows a lot better. Part of living as a gay man, again, in my case, and this video is for everybody. It's not just for gay men. It's for bisexual uh, people. It's for transgender people. It's for lesbian people. It's for whatever you are uh, in the LGBTQ space. Whatever, when I say as a gay man, I'm talking about my own experience. So I don't want you to think that this video is related only to being a gay man. It's for anybody who, again, is in, is in our space. And although my story won't be exactly what you might go through, you can translate some of the experiences that I've had into your own. So as I was saying, even in today's society, we've come a really long way, and there are so many great people who are accepting and open, but there are also people who are really closed-minded and not open to any anything else other than what they have been taught or uh, what they understand. So a big part of living as a gay man is recognizing your surroundings and making sure that it is an appropriate and safe space to share that part of yourself with somebody. Rewinding a little bit back to the Pink concert, shortly after, I don't think it was too much longer after that, I, uh, I decided to break the news to my mom. And the easiest way for me to do that was to write an email. And I know that a lot of people write letters, uh, but I had a Blackberry. So obviously the thing to do was to compose an email and send that off to her. So I actually have that email and I'm going to read it for you. Where is my phone? My phone gun! Okay, so I have the email. I'm going to go ahead and read it for you. Keep in mind, this was 15 year old me. So here it goes. It says, Hi mom, it's just me, obviously, <laughs> sending you a quick message. I just wanted to tell you something. It's taken a long time for me to come to the decision to talk to anyone about this. And I don't want you to think any differently of me, but I trust that you will respect it. I'm gay. What more is there to say? <laughs> and that was not an intentional rhyme either. I'm sure it's been quite obvious to you. If not, well now you know. I don't want you to say anything to anyone. If I decide to tell them, that will be my decision. I am hoping that this will bring us to a new level in our relationship. And I hope that I'm not disappointing you or something. Just thought it was time to tell you. Love, Ian. And so I think, I think how in this moment, I think it shows you how, what, a, what an emotional time that was for me and for all the other people that go through the same thing. I had to choke back, barely getting through that email. Uh, right now, I am feeling exactly like I felt when I sent that email. I was terrified, I was scared. Even though I knew, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that neither my mom or my dad would change the way they felt about me because I was gay. I mean, my mom told my sister and I throughout our entire childhood that we could be anybody that we wanted to be and we could love whoever we wanted to love. But in that moment, sharing that part of me with somebody who was so close to me and important to me was a huge, huge thing. And I sent that email really late at night. I think it was like 18 minutes after midnight or something. So I had decided that I was doing it. I had waited all day, all day. Midnight hit. I knew I had promised myself that I was going to do it. And so finally, 18 minutes past my deadline, I sent her that email. And uh, I remember getting her response back. I think she was sleeping at the time, so I didn't get it till, till the next morning. But I remember getting her response back and it was very sweet and very kind and beautifully written as, you know, she always is. I feel so grateful for that, that I had such an accepting and open person that was so important to me in my life, so monumental in my life 
to accept me for who I am and who I was at the time. Because I know there are so many stories out there where it, it, it's, it's nothing like what I have gone through. So I know that the, the initial process for me was much easier um, than some. But I think that it's important to look at both sides of the same coin. It's good to look at negative experiences and see how they've turned positive and see positive experiences as well that continue to be mostly positive. And I don't want anybody to think that I had it so easy because no matter what anybody else's reaction is to your story, there's the, the internal battle that goes on and then when you have outside things also attacking, it certainly makes for a much more difficult experience. So in terms of telling the rest of my family, luckily my mom, with my permission, did a lot of the legwork, so I only really had to come out to my family the one time. But like I was saying before, it's 2018, we've come a long way, we're making really good progress, but we still have a long way to go. In my adult life as a gay man, Things still happen to me. I've had things thrown at me. People spew things out of their car window. They say awful things. They scream down the street. I get laughed at. It happens. What I decided a long time ago was that I was going to let those things fuel me uh, instead of bring me down. And I think that all of these things that have happened and continue to happen help me make the decisions that I make every single day. So if I can leave anybody with anything, one of the number one things that I would say would be to continue to watch videos like mine or like other people's. Connect with people like you, especially if you're not out or in an environment where it would be extremely difficult to, to do that. Seek help and advice from people like us. Uh, like I said, continue to watch videos like this. There are so many resources available nowadays. Even back when I came out uh, over 10 years ago, there was nothing like what we have now in terms of social media and resources and online communities, etc. There's so much available. So keep plugged in to this wealth of, of people who are, who are like us and who are able to to give you uh, that support and that encouragement. So I hope this video has helped you wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever you're going through. I hope maybe that I've been able to shed some light on um, maybe how to go about doing it or just give you an insight of what my experience was and, and how life now is much better than it was. Again, I know it's cliche, but it really, really does get better. Keep pushing, keep powering through. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, I would appreciate a big thumbs up. And of course, you can hit that subscribe button down below. Also, there's a little bell right beside that. If you'd like to know when I'm posting, click the bell so you get a notification. And I'll see you next week. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.